Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Nikki with Green Sprout Living. Today I'm going to take you on a farm tour to Abundant Pastures. Okay guys, so we came out and got my friend Mallory with uh, Barefoot Microgreens and we are going to go over to Abundant Pastures with our kiddos. Um, they raise what do they do? They have pasture raised meats. Is that yes. what they do? Regenerative farming kind yes. of. So we're going to check out that. It's a homeschooling tour, so I'm not for sure exactly how much I'm going to be able to record, but come along with us. We're going to have a fun day. Um, I am Leah Atkins. This is my husband, Matt Atkins. We have five children and we also homeschool. So, uh, right along with you guys. Um, we started Abundant Pastures back in 2019. Is that correct? I don't know. Guys are good at it. And, um, we, so we're kind of like a grocery store. We have beef, chicken, um, lamb, and turkey meat, and then we do eggs, and then in season we do vegetables. Did I miss anything? Uh, okay, so we. Um, so we have around 36 beds garden beds and we are constantly planting so uh, like right here we have some radishes that we've been picking on and selling and eating and as soon as that bed gets empty we Matt will plant some more into it so we always have stuff growing pretty well all year round uh, and as soon as actually as soon as that radish bed gets emptied out green beans will go in the ground um, so we're always planting something we normally don't have any empty beds if they are empty it's only for a very short period of time and at 8 p.m this evening our uh, irrigation system do you see we have nine posts with water heads on them uh, it turns on automatically and the entire garden will get um, watered. watered. So this row runs for 15 minutes. Uh, the middle one cover goes 180 degrees and the two sides go 90 degrees to cover the garden. Then the one in the middle, the very middle, it runs 30 minutes after this row is done and it goes 100 or 360 degrees and then the back three run together and they kind of water the water as well and so that all gets an even cut for the most part a theme that we have around here matt will tell you is we automate a lot of things so automation is one way that we are able to do as much as we do so because this is watered, we don't have to go and hand water everything, it saves us time. Um, all, of our, all of our animals get watered. They are all on float valves, so it is also automated. We nice. don't have to stand there and hold a hose in the trough and wait till it fills up or so. Does it block all the weeds? No, we so like, weed? weeds okay gotcha. <laughs> these are the tools there yeah we also um this year for the first time we are trying a what do you call that flame weeder, flame weeder which is basically a torch mm -hmm. and um so we come through with the, so what the purpose of a flame weeder is it kill it it ruptures this the then it cannot hold water so it dies okay is how that works. So like when we do the radish, we'll pick all those radishes, flame it, and then flame it. Yeah. So are you spending like an hour a day on this or? Um, I try to, my goal every week is to go through and weed the entire thing once a week. Gotcha. So 
but that's kind of how we stay on top of it. It and the other thing is if something goes to seed like if it goes to weeds and it's uncontrollable, we have black tarps over there and we will just cover the bed and let the sun bake the weeds and wait to wait like two weeks and then go uncover it and then try again. We talked about uh, planting and flaming. What we don't do here at all is till. So when you till, you're just bringing up more weed seeds from the bottom. So we're mulching the pathways. All the bed material is compost from our chicken brooder. So we're constantly just adding new material that is no. weed free. So like from, um, from a mindset standpoint, we're growing annual plants in kind of a, in a forest, essentially, with ground cover not being disturbed, organic material coming down on it every year, but we're growing annual plants. Yeah. So like you walk through a woods or a forest, you don't have annual weeds. You have perennial weeds, which are easy to manage from a person's standpoint. Hmm. So that's why we're doing it that way. So these are turkeys. This is our first batch of turkeys for the year. We're going to do two batches. The second one will be uh, middle of the summer and they'll finish out right before Thanksgiving. These are uh, for, for parts, for like uh, ground turkey or turkey breast or turkey drumsticks. Uh, so they were in this brooder house with a heat lamp for five weeks and now they're acclimating, getting used to this fence for a week or so and then they will move on down to the pasture and they'll be down there yeah. for the remainder of their summer. Yeah. We do. So we grind our own feed. Cool. It's, uh, it's all non-GMO uh, roasted soy and corn are the main ingredients. Okay. So most feed that you get like a feed store, it's a soybean meal. We use a whole bean that's roasted. So. Awesome. Turkeys require a lot higher protein for the first uh, six weeks or so than anything else does. And then after that, we'll put them on the same feed as the birds. Okay. So, yes, Liz. Why do you roast the soybeans for the turkeys? Uh, the, well, the soybeans are roasted for any animal okay. that we do. Uh, it, it breaks down the soy, or the roasting process.